Hello, my beautiful friends, my name is Maria Khorieva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is really exciting. I have such a special guest. I just have to say this woman, she literally transformed my life in Bali back in the days when I was at the Vaganova. And still to this day, I watch her advices. I do her workouts and Bali classes. You've guessed it. It's the beautiful Catherine Morgan. Hi, Catherine. So amazing to have you here on my channel today. Oh, thank you, Maria. I am so happy to be here. I mean, this is an honor. I'm such a huge fan of yours as well. I think you're stunning. <laughs> everything you do thank you so much but really like isn't the modern world the incredible source of opportunities like you can be talking to a person uh, on the other side of the world it's 8 30 a.m in california it's 7 30 p.m in st petersburg russia and we are still talking to each other and even though we're in different rooms through the magic of editing we are going to be in the same video and discussing quite an interesting topic today we are also going to film another video for Catherine's channel where we're going to be talking about how to get ready for the performance which is such an important part of the life of an artist but today on my channel we are going to be talking about how to stay in shape how to get back in shape after vacation after injury after being sick so for me it's one of the most important topics in ballet life in general because for me getting back in shape is such a pain always i don't know it's just uh, such a tricky moment to get it right so today i really want to discuss it with you i've prepared a list of like questions and a list of uh, topics that I wanted to ask you about and I wanted to share my and your opinion on these things. So let's dive in, shall we? Let's do it. S yes. yes. Yay. So the first thing is like skipping how much time is crucial for you. When do you start feeling that you are kind of losing your shape and uh, the body is not uh, listening to you anymore? It's funny because it, I, when I was younger, I used to be able to take off two weeks and just come back fine. But recently after Nutcracker, I took off one week and it was like six months. So I think after about a week, I'm like, okay, we need to get back into the studio now. What about you? When do you start to feel it? Well, I would say that it's like, for me, I start feeling after four or five days, I guess. It's like really the jumping power goes away and I feel like I cannot run a variation anymore. Oh, for so, sure. So yeah, like around a week, I would say. Also the same thing when I was at Vaganov, I could do like uh, one month off and it was fine. But now <laughs> getting like more professional, I guess, uh, you really feel all of the little details. For sure. And for me too, it's, it's the, the first thing that goes is the point work. I feel like the shoes don't quite work with my feet when I take too much time off or a week off and it's just they just feel like they're flapping as opposed to me being in control that's for me the right question to yeah yeah so which brings us to the next question is what problems uh, with your shape uh, do you feel after skipping like what are the things that go like in chronological order what goes away first I think probably the stamina I'll, I'll yeah, you know, yeah. come back and in one, in a few days, it's like, oh wait, I just, I was able to run a pot of last week and now I can't even get through bar. Right, um, yeah. And then the feet. For me, it's just the, I, I love to do bar and point shoes anyway. It's just like a training thing for me. And it's a whole lot harder after time off. So I'd say, mm -hmm. I'd say for sure stamina in the feet. Yeah. What about you? Well, for me, I would say it's, um, Stamina, yeah, for sure. Even even if I'm not dancing as much, like performing as much and just doing the classes and rehearsals, uh, I would still feel like my stamina goes away. If I'm not doing like uh, three shows a month, uh, I would still feel that doing a show is much harder. But then, yeah, stamina for sure. And to, then for me, it's turnout, actually. It's oh, it's really hard to stand in the fifth position and like do all of the all of the movements in a turned out way after after skipping and and jumps oh, and if jumps. you're not able to jump for a long time big jumps and jumps in a variation in point shoes for me like the muscles and when you skip you feel like your muscles start hurting when you start jumping back so that's that's one dangerous thing for me 
to keep an eye on, starting jumping very carefully after skipping. That, also, no, actually, that makes a lot of sense because for me it's also the landings. I feel like the landings are just harder when you're not af after time off. It's, it's not only the getting up, it's the getting down. <laughs> That's like yeah, the, right. it's a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. But also like uh, we do face when we skip, we don't have the regular uh, dose of uh, activity and sometimes the problems like with the weight, we have to watch the weight uh, more um, during, during skipping, right? Like for me, it's kind of I'm trying to manage my eating plan when I'm skipping, when I'm not doing a lot of rehearsals and classes. Uh, yep. Also that thing is it's kind of a problem. So, what about like, uh, how are the things with flexibility? Do you really feel like you tend to lose flexibility when you are not um, exercising regularly? Not too you... bad, actually. I feel like for me, front and side are always gonna be fine. It's arabesque, the kind of, it's like my back, when I take time off, tends to tighten up. And so it's just getting that to open up again, um, as opposed to front and side. Um, hamstring. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's more back than hamstring for me. Um, when yeah, I yeah, yeah. Off. Yeah. It's more so about muscles, right? Yeah. Than the flexibility of the ligaments and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then, like, what are the usual reasons that we skip? Uh, and what is kind of what is the difference? Because for me, it's so, so, so different when I skip when I'm sick, for example, sick with fever, and then getting back is so much harder. Or when it's the vacation, when you can exercise and stretch a little bit uh, on the days when you feel like doing it. And also when you are um, with an injury, you also have to be staying really careful, but you still can exercise, maybe, I don't know. Like, uh, what are the differences for you when, uh, with all of these different situations? Definitely when it's an illness and you have to, I feel like for me, if I take off because I'm sick or injured, it's not only getting back to where you were, but also working through that. So if I am sick and you are laid out for a, a week or so, you have to build that as well as getting past the illness. For me, it's so much worse <laughs> with that. Or an injury, you know, the, the hard part with injuries is that um, you also have to make sure you don't compensate for them. So when I'm coming back from an injury or from an illness, I try and make sure, even if I can't get through a full ballet class, that I do it evenly and not, or I'm gonna do all the stuff on the right, but I have to, you know, compensate for the left, then you're gonna be lopsided. Right. coming yeah, back yeah. so for me it's even if I can only make it to tondus or to degages I like to you know make sure I've done it evenly and not compensated one or the other but then for a vacation you know if you're walking if you're stretching if you're moving I mean it's always for me easier to come back after actual time off that I've chosen to take as opposed to force time off um, how is it for you with it's that? also a bit of a mind game say again <laughs> Uh, it's also a little bit of a mind game, yes. like uh, when, when you're calm, when you know that how much you're skipping, yeah. you're kind of planning it ahead, and when you're like uh, straight away sick with the high fever, yeah, oh, yeah, kind of ruins the schedule. Also, I feel like uh, the like the turns and the balances and uh, something for the like the head and the, I don't know how to say it right in English, but after you've been sick with fever. It's really, you also have to get back uh, the ability to turn and the ability to balance. I don't know, for me that's different from even injury and uh, vacation, which is like, you have to be actually seriously careful when rehearsing after getting back, uh, after being sick, because uh, some things, um, like not run a part of those straight away. After no, no, no. After, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, after you've it's been true running, though, yeah. because with, Oftentimes with illness, if you've gotten a headache or you're dizzy, it really does throw off your balance. And that's so dangerous for pirouettes or like we were talking about earlier, the jumps. If you're off of where your vision is for the landings, you could seriously injure yourself even more. Yeah. So actually the, the other reason that we skipped, uh, the, the new reason that appeared is quarantine and that's that's the whole another story like staying at home and uh, not being able to do anything and uh, 
So yeah, I remember that during quarantine, actually, I've been doing your ballet workouts almost every day. Uh, the, the, the one with the, I uh, specifically remember the exercises for the feet, uh, like uh, pushing yourself off of the mat. There's this one that you said that uh, compensates a little bit um, for the jumping that we couldn't, we couldn't do during quarantine. Yes. Which, which I think this exercise was, was really amazing. Just wanted to tell the, oh, yeah. I actually workout. loved doing your cardio that's good for the knees. Because that mm. is, I, especially when you're stuck, at home, I remember watching that going, thank you, Maria, because so many other cardio is just like pounded to the floor and you were like, let's, as dancers, we have to save our knees. So I highly recommend that one of yours. <laughs> that one was, that one saved me many times as well. No, oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. Did you do a lot of, how long were you all in quarantine? Were you stuck at home for a long time? Oh, not such a long time, but I think it was about three months. It was okay. not long for Mariansky, yeah. but yeah, still, still quite stressful. Yeah, I think we March, March, April, and May. Okay, and then we we slowly started back in, but still was kind of stressful because right after we came back from quarantine, I had to do this TV uh, competition, big ballet, and yeah, so it was kind of stressful because it was aired on TV and it was all filmed, and so yeah, I had to stay in shape. That's yeah, that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> We all had to go through this. Yes, and I mean, for me as well, it was a lot of bar in my living room. A lot of, and that's where I sort of got back into the love of using point shoes at bar. Um, yeah. That was, that sort of got my feet in shape without needing a lot of space. So I always recommend as many tondus as you can in your shoes. Yeah, yeah, because what other way you can use the point shoes, right? You don't have the space to run variation right. at, at home. Right, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, what do you think is the perfect ex exercising schedule like for a ballerina in general? Like how much of uh, classes and rehearsals per day when you're working during the work period? I think for me, I remember, especially when I was at New York City Ballet, the more performances we had, the, the more I had to kind of back down the, the extra things. When we're in rehearsal period, I made sure I did extra cross training um, to get to that performance shape, as we called it. Um, and so for me, if we weren't performing, it was more Pilates, it was more cardio. I tried to do more of class, but then once we got into performance season, it was all about being okay for the, the shows because with New York City Ballet, I'm not sure if you all are on the same schedule, it was eight times a week. It's just every night, you know, especially when you're young and the Crazy. poor, you Crazy. are on yeah. all the time. So it's it was more of, okay, just yeah. warm, class was more of a warm up than a work te on your technique. Yeah, sort yeah of right, thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it varied for me on, on what was happening in terms of performance or rehearsals, but um, now I like to do class at least five times a week. I think any less and it's just, it's, I don't quite maintain um, five to six times a week. I also do cross training still as well. I'm in my thirties now, so I also have to think of it a little bit differently than I did when I was in my twenties, but um, it's still, the more I do and just keep it consistent, the better I feel. So yeah. what about yeah. you? What about you? Well, yeah, the same thing, kind of, when, when we are performing, we are just surviving, and that's good, because the performance is, say, cross-training and everything all about the stamina in, in one thing, so, and more, and so spending so much energy, so you just have to be very careful around the performances. For example, I don't do uh, the class, um, like the full class on the day of the performance, because I want to save the energy, and I don't rehearse a lot before the performance, again, but I think when... When I have like one big performance a week, uh, one like lead role, I would say that class for sure, um, six times a week for me, or one day off, and I already feel a little bit less flexibility and a little bit less articulation in my legs. Well, of course, like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, and of course, one day off is very, very necessary. Yes. But still, you know, if thinking about skipping another day is kind of like, well, I'm not really going to be able to do these pirouettes that I did the day before. Yep. So that's, that's, and not going to be uh, able to keep the work consistent. So to keep the very detailed and intricate work consistent. But yeah, 
I would say for me, it's like if you run stuff at the rehearsal, if you really challenge your stamina, then for me, one hour of rehearsal is fine for a day. Right. Like if, if you just keep running and keep doing the stamina work, uh, I would say class and one hour rehearsal does it for me if it's an intense one. But if it's not, uh, well, every day I do a little bit of uh, fitness work before the class, actually, uh, while warming up and just maintaining my muscles and doing a little bit of this health maintaining uh, physical activity, if you, if you could say so. So yeah, I would say like around three, four hours a day when you're performing. I agree. I think a lot of, especially young dancers, just overdo it on rehearsal and they just over and over and over and at a certain point rehearsing something into the ground just is ends up backfiring I think I think there's a, right. a sweet spot that you don't have to do it over and over and over especially right before performance for sure yeah, for sure. yeah. yeah. I, I got a very very nice advice a, a few years ago that imagine like you have this 20 minutes in the studio and you just have to use it to the fullest like use these 20 minutes like you're gonna perform after tomorrow and like use them to the fullest like warm up nicely before the rehearsal think through all of the moments and just go in the studio and run all of the variations run them nicely uh get all of the corrections from the coach in your mind and then work on them at home and like work smarter not harder yes which is sometimes sometimes quite quite a nice thing in ballet of course sometimes we have to challenge our body but at some times i think it's best just to work mentally and save the legs because we still have to work for a long time for 20 years and we have to maintain that shape and keep the body feeling nice if that's possible and i think another one of the hard thing for me was that oftentimes with the schedule we had we do class in the morning rehearse all day and then perform and you'd have to do your best dancing at 8 8 p.m or 7 30 and it's hard to figure out especially when you're young how to plan out your day that you're mostly energized and your best dancing is at night that was always a struggle for me because i yeah, just went yeah. so hard that by the time you get to the show you're like oh wait <laughs> i've got to actually perform this now so that was always a struggle, yeah. Was always a struggle for me. yeah yeah that's so hard yeah Okay, let's get into the next topic. So, uh, do you think we need to like uh, really exercise during the vacation or do you think the time completely off is important? I think time off is, com is like completely off is, is important, but not ages and ages. I think, you know, taking one week off like we talked about earlier is great. Your muscles need to completely you know, reset, recharge, heal. Um, but it's also when you do that. At the end of a really hard season, absolutely. One week off, of, of two weeks off. Um, but during a season when you are performing, I didn't like to take more than one day off during a season. Yeah. Really. That yeah. one day of recovery, like you said, and then the next day, for us, it was, we always had Mondays off. So Tuesdays always felt a little bit rough because you, you're coming off of the one day. But I think after a really hard season, if you've been performing a lot, um, I think a full break is good, but not terribly long so that when you come back, you don't have to relearn everything and start from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I think- So how long of a break off off would you would you say is, is, is nice? I think one or two weeks. I think it depends on the dancer. Um, for me, yeah. I, like, I, when I was younger, two weeks was good. This time I took off a week after Nutcracker and that was plenty for me. Um, I think it's just listening to your body as well. Yeah. But like no stretching, no nothing, like completely. Oh, see, I, I would stretch a little bit here and there. I would walk here and there, but I just made sure for one week I didn't do any ballet. Um, it's good to work different muscles. If you wanna go for a walk, if you wanna go for a swim, a little bit of stretching. Um, I made sure I was still active, but not pushing myself in a balletic way, if that makes yeah. sense. But I like to stay active even when I'm not dancing, yeah, because yeah, yeah. otherwise I just feel terrible. <laughs> it's just yeah. Yeah, right. not good. What about you? Is that <laughs> okay, similar, yeah, for you? similar for you? 
Yeah, yeah, totally. I feel like it's in dancers' blood, staying active, like, and, and stretching, it's just implemented in the schedule, like, just a little bit, because otherwise the body doesn't feel, doesn't feel nice. So, yeah. Well, I also think that break, uh, the complete break is important because all of the little injuries and stuff need to... Uh, because we still get injured during performing, like a little bit, a little bit here and there, yeah. So, as you mentioned, but yeah, but I actually, you know, um, this year I didn't, well, I did a little bit of bar every day uh, during the vacation and it was sort of... Um, like staying active thing for me like we were we were in a um, good warm uh, country and in this uh, country house and I was just you know holding uh, seeing the sea in front of me and uh, holding onto a chair and doing a um, a bar in the terrace and that was actually really really a beautiful pastime so yeah I would say listening to your body and you know figuring out as you go how much time is okay for your body to uh, be completely resting. But then there's the whole other story, how to get back in shape after resting completely, <laughs> which yeah. is, which I think is the next, which is the next question. Uh, yeah, so the next question I have is, do we need everyday ballet class if we want to stay in shape during the vacation? So like, for example, let's say you have a month off, like how much, uh, of vacation do you get uh, at uh, uh, American theaters? Um. It For us, it varied. The schedule has changed since I was there. Our hardest season was that we did our eight week rehearsal period, straight into six weeks of Nutcracker, straight into an eight week winter season. And that was really difficult. Now they've changed it to give dancers a week or two off in between Nutcracker and winter season. Um, or if it's pretty much after every big season, winter, spring, fall, there is a week or two, sometimes a month. And then in the summer, we get probably five or six weeks off as well. Um, for me, I don't take the whole time off. Absolutely not. Um, because oftentimes, day one back, you, you, you're full rehearsal mode again. They don't ease you in. When you're working, you're working. So for most of us, it was, okay, I'll take a week off and then build back slowly over the two or three weeks I have left so that when day one starts back at work, I can start rehearsing because they don't, you know, they're not like, okay, well these, you know, we got to start rehearsing these ballets. Like you've got to be able to start doing them when we get back. So maybe there's a week in there somewhere that you're not at full capacity, but I like to take my time off, but then over the rest of the vacation, build back slowly. Even if I start with bar for a week, then add back turns, then add back jumps. Um, I never go from nothing to all. Yeah, so, so how do you build back? Like, uh, do you just stick to ballet, to, to bar, and then adding stuff, or do you incorporate fitness and some um, cross training and Pilates and stuff. It, there's some cross training in there too. I make sure I do some sort of cardio, whether it's at the gym or mm -hmm. you know one of your videos or a, a sort of cardio video, just to get that aerobic feeling back up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because ballet is very stop and start. So for me, it's that. For me, it is extra Pilates or strengthening. Um, but for me, the, the fastest way I get back in shape is doing bar on point. It's like, it just kicks everything back into gear. So I might do bar on flat for a little bit, but then once I add the point shoes back, that's when my muscles are like, okay, we're back. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> yeah, well, same thing for me, bar is necessary. Yeah. Uh, like you start with bar, bar is magic, bar is medicine pill, bar is everything. But then, yeah, I do some cardio to to, to get the strength of the muscles and to uh, remember how the lungs are feeling when they're dead. Uh, and yeah, so um, some Pilates, of course, but yeah, better, nothing gets back gets you back in shape better than like repeating tandis over and over and over again yeah but for me it's a combination of ballet and fitness that it works best for building back in yeah so then let's uh, see 
What do you think is the difference between men and women in this aspect? I've like, uh, I've always been curious, uh, like for whom it's harder to get back in shape for, for like, because I feel like for the guys, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of easier. It feels like it's easier. It looks like it's easier. Like even though they're jumping, they're, they can skip a lot and they come back really nicely. And yes. well, maybe because they're tough and they don't show it, but I don't know, for me, it feels like it's easier in them. I, I don't know, I don't know, oh, probably it's not, but <laughs> what do you think? I agree, because I'll see even, you know, my fiance who has recently retired from dancing, he'll want to get in shape and in like three days, he's fine. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> three days? So I think for the guys, it's easier. From what I've seen as well, for them, it's getting their partnering muscles back that I think is the mm. hardest. They're like, oh, mm. well, you know, with lifts, they're like, oh, I've been off for a while. Um, and I think for them, it's also, they have a harder time with the flexibility, obviously. But I feel like in terms of ballet, I've seen more men be able to take off longer and come back with the next day. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they are just top guys and don't want to show how they struggle. Right, true. And we are like <laughs> crying and uh, saying to everyone that we are sore. Maybe it's because we are not as tough as them. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> I think it also has to do with the point shoes. I think point shoes yeah. are a whole nother level of being in shape. And so, you know, they don't, they, they don't have to find that again. So I think that's it. That's funny you say that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, yeah, it was really interesting to, to get to know all of the details about Chia. And I think on that funny note, we should probably round up the video and get ready for the video on your channel, which is going to be pretty exciting. So, guys, the videos are uploaded at the same time. So you right now can go watch the video on Catherine's channel, which is amazing. Again, the magic of editing. So yeah, thank you so much, Catherine, for coming to my channel and for saying, telling us all about the interesting details. And yeah, maybe, maybe you could come back one day and we could chat about something else. Oh, I'd love to. It was thank really interesting to know. Uh, yeah, very interesting for me. I got a lot of information from you to, to think about when I go back in shape the next time <laughs> no i thank you so much for having me it's it's an honor to be able to, to do this with you through the magic of technology yeah thank you so much guys for watching uh, hopefully this video was interesting for you thank you so much for staying and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it and subscribe to this channel also subscribe to katherine uh if you want to see more ballet content and uh Thank you again, love you all, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye-bye. Okay, so guys, we are also gonna film a video for YAGP's channel, which is so interesting, the differences between Vaganova and Balanchine technique. It's so interesting for me, and I'm sure it will be interesting for you to watch, so go check that video out as well. I'll link it below in the description box.